Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello! Hello! Welcome to the weekly recap of General Hospital Last week of brand new episodes for the time being. That makes me so sad. May 18th through the 21st, and then Flashback Friday on May 22nd. And General Hospital, like the official Instagram page, sent out a reminder on Instagram today saying, don't forget to set your DVRs for all episodes, not just new episodes. That way you don't miss because they are going to be doing... Oh, that was smart. Yes. So kudos to them for... And reminding us all to do that. I remember those days. I don't miss having a DVR. Because mm-hmm. if you don't put new episode, you or if you don't put all, all episodes, episodes, you don't get it. Right. And then whenever it airs reruns at 3 o'clock in the morning for six hours, you wake up and you're like, oh, I didn't want that. Now I have to delete all of it. But still, let me think about all the people that might have missed Flashback Fridays because their Very DVR true. was set up for all new episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's our little PSA for you. I just can't believe that we're here already. So I did have a thought, though, and I've been thinking this for quite some time. On Thursday, we're going to be talking about the story of Soaps Mm -hmm. special that aired this week on ABC. Right. We both watched it. We're going to talk about it on the Poor Charles 411 on Thursday. But little spoiler alert, nothing major. They talk about how basically things have kind of come full circle where... You listened to soap operas on the radio, and I've actually been thinking, I was like, why don't they get the actors to do, like, Zoom reads together? Right. And, I mean, I, as a fan, would appreciate it just to get the story, Mm -hmm. would totally miss the actual... Right. Even if they didn't want to do the whole week, just tune in on Wednesday, and then we'll move the storyline along this much. Right. You know, once a week, or every Monday... Yeah. Just have it be brand new episode Monday. It's going to be, it's going to be Brady Bunch style Zoom, you know, but yeah, this is how we're doing it. And, or they could even just do, you know, whenever there's only two people on the episode, right. They just talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's, I think that there could be a really creative way, especially if they don't know when this is going to happen. Right. I don't know if other fans would be in favor of that. Or if they would then complain, why are you doing this? Well, because you want your story and this is how we used to do it. Yeah. I thought that was a really interesting comparison of we all Mm -hmm. started listening on the radio and now people think podcasts are this brand new invention. They're not. No. (laughs) They're not. No, they're just a different name. It's exactly how we started this whole thing. But I just, I think that that would be a good I do too. I totally agree. I mean, they've had success. They've done those like joking around ones with different actors from different yeah stories. So why not actually do one? Yeah, just to move the story along little by little. I'm sure that Cynthia Watros could figure out how to make her house look like a stand. Right. You know, she could sit at her kitchen table. Yep. There you go. Yeah. I'm with you. That's a brilliant idea. I think that we could figure this out, guys. <laughs> We give you the idea, you do the application. I am not a fan of making suggestions for things that I'm not willing to do myself. <laughs> but we can't really do this for Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, as a fan, I would appreciate if yes. you're thinking about it at all. Right. At least do three episodes. And if they don't have a good listener listener response, then mm-hmm. I will. Although I do think that they have, I think that there are definitely scenes recorded, taped, True. that haven't been put together. Because... I looked at Josh Swickard's Instagram and I forgot at the beginning of March, he posted a picture of himself and Chad Duell in tuxes walking out. I don't remember them. No, that would be the nurse's ball. And they've been talking about the nurse's ball this week. So, well, some people were guessing that was the Willow and Michael getting married, but as we know now, right. (laughs) Chase was not there. Hmm. So, but where do you want to get started? Normally I say, this is a good week. It kind of moved the storyline along. I don't think it moved the storyline along at all this week. We are stuck in baby Wiley zone again. Yeah. I need to start writing down. There was something that we talked about last week. And I was like, oh, that's the answer. And I didn't. Hold on. It might have been something for Thursday. Thursday. 
These are not all my notes. I ran out <laughs> of space on I'm one thing. I'm ready to make fun of you. Literally has a notebook full of notes. And no. I have my one screen of on my phone notes. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Darn it. I did say, from my understanding, cocaine is not cheap. And she's just handing it out like Halloween candy. So I have a friend who was into drugs for a while. And I asked him this question because... Thank you, I Amanda. Said, I said... About the whole, she handed her like an entire thing of it and it was all gone. Wouldn't that have been too much? And he said, assuming it wasn't laced with anything extra that was bad, it wouldn't have killed her, but she would have been way higher than just, yay, I'm ready to shoot pictures. And then he said, if you know the dealer, then they don't charge you for it if you're one of their close friends. So maybe they give free samples? Yes. Oh but my like gosh. repeatedly, like during his time of doing drugs, he did not pay for the drugs that he did because he was friends with the dealer. And that that's the way that they get you, you know, hooked on it is, oh, here, no, just take some, fine. And then after you've done it two or three times, you need it, so you'll pay for it. That's really sad. I'm it sorry. Is. It is. It's very sad. But I'm assuming that that's the way they're playing this storyline, is this girl's going to give her two or three free samples, and then Sasha's going to be addicted and want to be paying for it, need mm. to pay for it. It makes me sad. It is sad. But I was happy to have an answer because I was very concerned that she would have died from that vibe. No, absolutely. Thank you for getting that <laughs> research. I'm glad that your friend yes. has recovered as well. Oh, yes. So, yes. That's good. All right. You get to pick the topic that we I, segue to from that one. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I remember what it was. So I was going to say something this week about... You know, it's been over a year since Oscar died and no one's even mentioned it. And then sure enough, because we are still behind from all the presidential. Right. See, everyone, you should be thankful (laughs) that they kept preempting. Exactly. Because we would have been done a lot sooner. Very true. Because Oscar passed away April 29th. So they're basically behind about a month. month. Yeah. I didn't like that scene with the four of them, though. It felt anticlimactic they talked about oscar dying then they talked about the frisbee i wasn't getting the vibe that they didn't want joss there because he's still crushing on her it was more like this is a me and trina thing and we don't want you there i think trina was trying to do it to cover okay okay but here's the thing we've never seen them do this to begin with true so it would have been something if while joss and dev were in their quarantine Mm -hmm. or their house arrest yes. yes They picked up this Frisbee League. Right. And you know what? We're already halfway through the season. Sorry about your luck. Yeah. Right. But you can come next year or something. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I don't know. It just, and then that was the end of it. Maybe obviously if we would have had more episodes, it would have made more sense or whatever. But Joss and Dev went home and Cam and Trina walked away and that was it. There was no more discussion of it at all. And we're going to forget about it. By the time we get new ones. I hope that they do a recap. They better. Because Hulu deletes them. Right. After 13 days. So it's not like other shows where you're like, you know what? I forget what happened on the season finale of Grey's Anatomy. Let me go back and Mm -hmm. watch it. We can't do that. Right. No, they better have a recap. It only makes sense. It does. Oh, last week I called it when I was like, Sonny is going to ask Julian, what does Nell have on you? Mm -hmm. And he sure did. Yeah, it didn't take anyone long to realize that that was not out of the kindness of Julian's heart that he would marry her. No, but I actually think it is because he probably knew that marrying now would tank her case. Yes. Yes. So he did marry her because he was like, yeah, they're not going to give a baby to me. Mm -hmm. No, I agree that he thought that far ahead just by like his mannerisms this week. But I don't think... I think he knew he had to do it and that that was the other side of it. So he just said yes and went with it. But that he had to do it anyway, no matter what, because of the information that she had. It wasn't wasn't his idea, like, oh, I'm so smart. I'm going to trick you by saying, let's get married, and then they won't give you the baby. Do you think that he's going to crack? I don't know. I think it depends on what they ask him. They shouldn't ask him, do you love her, the way that they asked her if if she loved him and Michael about Willow. And she I loved, danced all around that. She did. But I loved Michael's answer because that was a very true, honest answer. He loves her. No, he's not in love with her, but they're going to raise this baby in a nice life. Yeah, I just wish he hadn't said that because then it's, okay, so why'd you marry her? It's very obvious then. 
It is, but I think he had to come clean at that point so that it would make Nell's marriage look awful. Because the judge isn't that dumb. You both got married 12 hours before this custody hearing. It obviously had something to do with the custody hearing. Yes. I did love Martin Gray's, you know, you should have told me about this. You yeah. Know, that was really dumb. I think that, I don't think she's going to get it. Although I do think that she's going to like hold up her necklace and Nina's going to see it and be like, my daughter. Yeah. I'm not going to like that. Yeah. I well, like, they have some time to change it. They do. <laughs> I liked Carly's look at Jax whenever he walked in with her. Like, mm-hmm. what is she doing? Why have you not talked her out of this yet? And he's just like, nope, I'm, I can't do it. <laughs> just going to sit here. At least he sat on Michael's side of the courtroom. Very true. Very true. I didn't pick up on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did, but right. it didn't occur to me that, yes, Nina's there for Nell's side. Right. Don't you hate when you're listening to a great podcast and suddenly you're interrupted by an ad? I know. Thank goodness Stitcher lets us listen to our favorite podcasts like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, and many more ad-free for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. Go to stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Use promo code PEER54 for one month free on us. None of the storylines easily lead into the next one. That was what was wrong with this week. What do you mean? There was a chunk of this, a chunk of that, like, even talking about it. Normally one thing happens in the first scene and it just easily flows into the next scene, even if it's not between the same people or a general character not moving from one to the next. And this week it was almost like eight separate shows going on at the same time. So I do have a feeling that some of what we watched was pieced together after production ended and they just did the best that they could. There was an article on Yahoo News. Because remember when they were doing all the flashbacks and I said something about, I wonder if they've done this post-production right. to expand it? They did. Okay. So they added extra flashbacks to make episodes stretch. Okay. And that's fine. It's not that I didn't like this week's episodes. It just didn't flow very easily. That's probably why though. Yeah. Do you think Ava's going to end up selling to Renault? She said no, but do you think in the end? Do you want the, what she can and can't do? Or what the soap <laughs> opera is going to say she... You can give us both. Go ahead. First of all, that's not how it works. <laughs> okay. The buyer doesn't go to the seller and say, by the way, I just need the closing papers. <laughs> should always have an attorney present. Okay. Even if you're doing for sale by owner, have an attorney present. Okay. I don't know Lucy's setup, but I right. imagine that that's not how closings typically go. And there are certain things that fall under fair housing. Okay. They do vary. There are federal, there are state, and there can be city. Okay. So I don't know what Port Charles Fair Housing <laughs> says. <laughs> there's no, there's a lot of things. I, I don't think Ava really cares about following the law when it comes to right. this. But I don't know because she didn't know who the buyer was. Right. So all other things considered, it's tough. Yeah. If she said take the first offer or the best offer and he came in with a cash offer, right. there may already be something signed. Somewhere. He's a willing and able buyer. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a tricky, tricky situation. I did like how she told him to never bring up Avery again. Yes. He should watch who he's messing with because she would kill someone over Avery. Or just say something to Sonny and that may be what pushes him over the edge. Well, and then I can't believe Sonny really got on her so quickly. I know. That kind of really bummed me out. It wasn't... He didn't just say... Yeah, he what accused the heck, her Ava? of all kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> accused her of all kind of shady stuff when she had no idea. And they had yeah. just had that nice interaction what was literally supposed to be hours earlier. Right. That was a bummer. It was. I did say that everything Sunny is struggling with is why it is so important to have these decisions made beforehand in writing. And even if you can't make a decision, even if you can't make a decision in your 30s, you need to be continually updating that information over years. Especially designated someone to be making these decisions for you. Yes, yes, you should. And I'm a fan of not having it be a family member, personally. I mean, I think my husband would kill me. So, (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) I do think that he would, like, if I said, I don't want this, but I honestly don't know. So, I've kind of had someone else that... (laughs) Yeah, that'll follow what you say. Right. I don't have anything right now, so I have no idea, but... Even if it's not a formal will or advanced directive or something, like at least having those conversations. Yes. You know? Yes. And it's tough to think about because you also don't know 
how medicine's going to progress. Mm -hmm. And what, 50 years ago, Mike would have been dead already. Right. Exactly. He's not, he's not a young guy. I did think it was weird that it was Elizabeth again, pointing out the fact that he's declining so quickly. No one on staff there is saying, Hey, this is usually a sign of, well, especially when he's in a specific treatment facility. Right. And they wouldn't sugarcoat it. No. Yeah. And they would have had that conversation when he went into it. This is how it normally progresses. Mm -hmm. Let us know if you don't want this, you do want this, whatever. But there's a treatment plan when you go into one of those places. Yeah. So, I don't know. I can't remember why I wrote this down, but I just said that I would have loved for them to have developed the Chase loving the Red Sox. Because they always talk about the Yankees, and so it would have been just, it would have been nice for me. Oh my gosh, I'm wearing a Red Sox shirt. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're a dork. Yeah. Ironic. <laughs> I'm missing my baseball. I wonder why I threw that in there. I just happened to be wearing No, I wrote it, it down. That's midweek that I wrote that down. <laughs> Look at the order. Very nice. <laughs> Do you think Brooklyn's going to, she can't get her shares back. She can't I mean, get that's her not shares how it works. back. And I don't understand how she, I know Ned is secretive with his talk, but they live in the same house. How did she not know this ahead of time? Right. Because he would have especially probably given her that heads up saying, by the way, someone's out coaching right, ALQ stocks. Yes. Let me know if you get a phone call. Right. And when you left her, not that she didn't need to handle her grown up issues herself, but when you left her in this contract that she said she didn't want to be in and you weren't helping her. You don't think you would have mentioned, by the way, don't sell those because right. you're going to totally mess up the family. Brooklyn is who you want to have your back, though. Oh, yeah. And she wasn't eavesdropping. She just legit walked into the room. And yeah, she did not walk right back out. But she was only overhearing for not even five seconds before right. she went, ahem. Yes. And let it be known. Mm -hmm. I, th I feel like she was, because the look on her face was, am I seriously hearing this? Right. And she maybe wanted a little bit more information before yes. she lost her mind. And even if she was going to lose her mind, it was to protect her dad. Right. It wasn't, oh, I'm listening to this information so I can blackmail you next week with it or something. Right. It was, are you seriously cheating on my dad? Which that conversation totally did sound like she was. Absolutely. Except for, and I totally knew that she was talking to a psychic. Yes. Because you see into my soul. I was like, that's psychic. Yes. I wonder what line she uses. Those can get very expensive. She has a personal one. It's not a line. Oh, okay. That can be very and expensive. Brooklyn did redeem herself. Well, she didn't redeem herself, but when she realized that she was doing it for Dante, for information about right. Dante, she, she was like, oh. And you could tell, honestly, felt very bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I like, I like Brooklyn. I hope that they take this time to really develop her character into being one of the main characters. Yeah. She adds a lot to the little sidebars that she gets. But Luke's line is disconnected. I didn't like the fact that the way to reach Luke was to go to Tracy. Why doesn't Lulu have his number? That's not very nice parenting. Yeah. I understand if Laura doesn't. They're divorced. Okay, fine, whatever. But you don't make sure that your daughter has it? Yeah. That's weird. True. Very weird. Very true. But I liked that Ned respected the chain of command there and was like... Yes, I can't just give you his number. I have to let him know to right. call you. That was funny. Poor Robert. I don't think she's dead either, though. I'm no. not him. Oh, I don't think not at all. Not dead. We've already talked about that. Yeah, she's not. So I'm glad he's not accepting it and looking for the answers now instead of waiting five years and then her just popping up somewhere. Do you think that he and Olivia are going to wind up having an affair? No. Thank God. That was... No. I don't like that they had Ned look over the shoulder as... If they would have stopped the conversation so you didn't know that Olivia was talking to a psychic and then showed that scene... Oh, and yeah. And made you think, yeah. oh, she was talking to Robert, and then he just happens to show up, and now they're holding hands. I still think it's a ridiculous storyline. But that makes sense that that hand touching for a second would trigger, oh, maybe they're cheating. No. Right. Olivia's never going to cheat on Ned. Give me a break. I was there with you. Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, Valentine was so sweet to Sasha. He was so sincere. He was. He was. He can... I know you really like him, so go ahead. I just love James Patrick Stewart. He, he's so expressive with mm -hmm. his face. I mean, he... Right. He is the character. Yeah. Yep. 
And he looked glassy eyed and was like, I know what it's like to lose someone. Right. You know, I think that he knows exactly she did it on purpose and yeah. he knows. I hope that he's watching her close enough, though, that she doesn't end up developing this drug problem. And I don't know how she's going to be hanging out with Chase high on drugs and think that he's not going to notice or catch her or something. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think. Well, Lucky was doing drugs and he was a cop. Well, yeah. But Lucky, Lucky is a Spencer. That's a whole different kind of person. Chase, well, he was on pills. Yeah. That's easier to hide. Well, I don't, I don't know. I've never done them. <laughs> I don't know how I'm easy assuming, it is to hide. I'm assuming that pills are easier. And wasn't that one of those things like he got prescribed the pills for something and then got addicted to them? And then Maxie kept look, and looking them up. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you hurt your knee next week and I see you three months from now popping a pill and saying, oh man, my knee's acting up, I'm not going to accuse you of being a druggie. Oh no, there was, when so, I had my surgery, I was, I straight up told the doctor, I said, here's my family history. There's addiction in it to everything. Right. Right. Um, no, you know, to be cautious. And but they told me exactly how to avoid that. Right. What I could do to prevent it, to potentially prevent it from happening. But, but my pain was more manageable. I mean, I did have about a week mm-hmm. where I was on higher. You were fun that week. I was fun that week. <laughs> but then I was able to step down. So it's not like, I mean, yeah, when I moved my arms or something, like I would have be in pain. Right. You're but, not someone who uses medication, even for a headache. You wait till it gets bad enough that you actually need it. But as an outsider, if you said to me now, oh, I need to take this, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Where if you're snorting a line, I would be like, hey, sure. Shannon, what's going on? Well, cruel intentions, so, Sarah Michelle Geller hit right. it right in her cross. Exactly. So there's ways to hide. I'm sure that there is. I just don't want her to. I don't want her to either. And I think it's more behavior, though. Chase knows her well enough, even though they haven't dated, they've just been friends, they've hung out enough, that if she's constantly in this, hey, how are you, blah, 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 especially as she's being sad that her and Michael are broken up, he's going to say, what's what, going on? What, yeah. what are you on, essentially, because there's no way you're acting like this. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And he's not going to be one that just kind of covers it up. No. So. He'll arrest her. Yeah, that's going to get complicated. Can you get arrested just for having it on you? Depends on how much. Former cop wife. That's how she knows. <laughs> I don't know what, like, the. I don't know if they're all the same in every state or whatever, but I'm pretty sure. It's based on the amount? Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you mean by arrested. Detained for having it? Yes. Arrested, like you're in the jail for months on end? Like, if it's spilled out of her purse in front of him. No. I he wouldn't have to just arrest her. I don't think so. Either way, I think, I feel like he would. He arrested Willow. Right. And he put Willow under for punching somebody. He didn't arrest Willow. He put Willow detained her. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what I think he would do with Sasha. Okay. Or I bet he would give her an ultimatum of either go get help or I am going to arrest you Mm. and force her into treatment. But I don't know. We'll have to see how they play it out. I don't know. Yep. Last thing I have is Maxie's preggers. I know, but I don't want her to be. So she thought that she was pregnant on May 21st, which is James' birthday. And I am going to be okay that James is not getting a birthday this year because of this temporary hiatus. So okay. I'm okay. But you're going to be mad next year whenever she has a big baby shower and then not a third birthday party for him? Yes. I don't want her to be pregnant. There were tons of rumors out on the internet that someone was going to end up pregnant. And I kind of wanted it to be Molly after sitting on it for a while. I kind of wanted it to be Sasha so that this whole thing would get undone. Mm. No, I just don't see, I don't see that being as big of a scandal. I wanted it to be Molly for the same reason, that she would have to say to TJ, yeah, by the way. Yeah. And originally, I didn't want it to go that way when we first had this conversation. But as she sits there and they talk about this domestic partnership and plan everything, and she's That's exactly like not a excited. Yes. And she doesn't seem into it and excited. I don't think she's going to tell him the truth out of obligation to go ahead and be with him. And you should not get married or domestic partnership or anything else with someone out of obligation. So the baby would force her to say something. See, at the same time, I hope that it's not Molly because that would just really wreck her. She made a mistake. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Alexis could help her raise it because she did raise three girls. So I don't know. I mean, babies are amazing. You know, it's just... 
Right. A new baby to see on screen will be fun no matter what. And whoever it is that has a baby will be fun. I just didn't want it to be Maxie because I don't know. She doesn't get to see Georgie enough. We don't get to see James enough to give her another baby by Peter. And then to find out. Right. That Peter's a bigger yeah, jerk than she ever she imagined. But that's kind of like what I'm saying with Molly because she doesn't deserve what she would find out afterwards. She doesn't deserve. I don't know. Molly, I feel like, would be okay because she has a good support system no matter what. Maxie, she doesn't get to see Georgie because she's with Spinelli. She's raising James all by herself. And so this is a third baby that she has to raise alone. And I know Felicia and Mac are around, but it's still not the same. Yeah. And she just started this new job stuff. Like, that's a lot of stress for the poor girl. Give her a break. That could also be a reason to miss it. True. Is just stress. It happens. Exactly. I hope that's what it is. I hope they're just playing playing mind games with us. I don't want her to be pregnant. I did like that Sam apologized to Brando. Finally. Thought it was so funny that he was like, your mom? Because <laughs> I and thought he was hitting on her for a minute. I don't think he was hitting on her. I think he was just being nice. I did like before Sam apologized when he got an attitude with her and was like, just give me a list of everyone that you're related to so I know who to stay away from. Yep. But I'm glad she finally apologized and said what I said from the beginning. She had no right to go off on him. Molly's a big girl. Quit being a jerk. So that is that until we know more of the newbies. I have them pulled up on my phone, but do we want to talk about the daytime Emmy nominations? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Well, do you want to talk about Flashback Friday first? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I forgot that we weren't there yet, but I was just thinking I should pull this. We should pull this up. So why don't you pull them up and then we'll. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you, did you pull it up too? Are you there? Oh no. I was, I had an Amazon notification. <laughs> like, are you I thought like, you were pulling it up. I did pull it up, but I'm like, are you pulling it up too? Like we're going to go back and forth. I don't know. Okay. Do you want me to? Or do you no, want to read them? Okay. Whatever. I can read it. I'm just, you're funny. So anyway, Daytime Emmy Award nominations came out. From General Hospital is Steve Burton and John Lindstrom for Outstanding Performance by a Lead Actor in a Drama Series. I don't know that I agree that Steve should have got it this year. I can't think of any major storylines he was in. Did they show the clip that the nominated yeah. them or whatever? It's not on. This is just the list of them. Because they always have that clip. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I did read that. Maybe it was from the Donna Day stuff. Oh, Maybe. Okay. I did read that Maurice said he didn't want to be nominated because he didn't want to take it from someone else. He had already gotten enough. Can we just give him an honorary <laughs> we love you? Have an extra one? So there was a lot of people in the Facebook groups complaining that him and... Max Gale. Yes, and he said he didn't want them either. So they didn't nominate either one of them. Because they both won last year for the same storyline, but still... Yep. So they both Still, said, though, nominate us. I know, but there's people why, like, not whining, but understandably saying, why weren't they nominated this year? And someone chimed in and said, no, if you read this, it says, they said, don't even put our names in because that's not fair. So, so sweet. But they still did the work. They, <laughs> they deserve to still be recognized for the amazing work that they are doing. It's, I know, I feel like if they say humble. they don't want to be nominated, though, they know they did a good job and they don't need another one. Other people are doing good jobs, too. That's very humble of them. I mean, I I love it. I think it's sweet. Let's share the gold stars. That's what they're saying. They get all (laughs) the gold stars. This week's episode, gold star goes to Marisa Max Gale. (laughs) And then lead actress in the drama series is Fiona Hughes. Fanola. Fanola. Sorry, I always mess that up. Fanola Hughes and Mara West. She better win this year. But the problem is we don't have the Kiki dying issue that we did. That she got robbed from not winning Right. Last year. Again, I'm not, I need to see these clips. I, sh- I should have watched the clips. Um, outstanding performance by a supporting actor. The only one from General Hospital was your boyfriend, James Patrick Stewart. I'll take it. Outstanding performance by a supporting actress, Tamara Bruin, Rebecca Budding. And that's it from ours. I don't know. I feel like that has to be Tamara. That's going to win because Oscar died? Yeah. And then she lost it? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know the people from the other shows, but, you know, I have my own award ceremony that's mm-hmm. just the general hospital actresses and actors, so that's where we're at. A young performer in a drama series is Caitlin McMullen and Eden McCoy. How's that fair to have them in the same category? Because I think we talked about this last year. The age is something like up to 26 or something like <sighs> that is the young actor. Um, outstanding drama series, general hospital, and well, then we go into... I mean, they're all nominated for that 
<laughs> yes. There's only four. Yes, all four of them. Although it wasn't, I was going to say, I'm like, there wasn't, was one wasn't that, that wasn't nominated last year. That kind of stinks. Was that for the... Was that for the main award or that was for one of the side awards? I don't remember. I don't know. But it, it was goes funny. into morning show and all that other stuff. And I'm not going to get into any of that because it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I just thought it was sweet that Sonny and Mike said, no, we don't want to even be nominated. That's sweet. Yeah. So you want to talk about the Flashback Friday? Go ahead. Because you said you have a lot of information about this. So go okay. ahead. So it originally aired on April 1st, 2015, and it was the 52nd anniversary. Mm-hmm. And in the episode, we see... Patricia, is that when we met Valerie? We would have met Valerie like a year before. Mm -hmm. Okay. But did you know that that was actually, well, I mean, obviously now we know it was Chloe Lanier played Patricia. Yeah. She wasn't Nell yet. That's how she got Nell. Yes. Because she came on first as Patricia. And when they were talking about Nell, Laura White Wright was like so impressed with her that she had to be her. And she did. She did a great job. She did do a great job. She's a great actress. She is. As much as we love to hate her, she plays the parts that she's given amazingly. Yes. And she didn't become Nell until 2016. Okay. And when Patricia talks about 52 years ago tonight, the night that changed our lives, that was also the first night that General Hospital aired for Mm -hmm. the first day. Because April 1st, 1963 was the night that Luke's mom died. And they say dad ran out. And well, do you want to talk about it before I get my fun facts? (laughs) <laughs> my research your research before i get into my research um i just had the same thing that was the first time that we or that was the role that got chloe into now i thought that laura did an amazing job of playing the scared wife like yeah you could feel all of her okay just sit down just stop doing that just don't make your father upset it's okay we need to do this a hundred percent she played that i was really impressed i'm used to seeing her as carly all the time and that's kind of You don't mess with her. Yeah. So to see her in that way, she did an amazing, amazing job. And then I like how it ended with the very last shot when it had all three of the grown up kids, but then it had the actresses or actor that played them standing next to them. That was cute. Yeah. That was a good ending. That whole episode was really good. Well, because it shows like you always have, there's always something from your childhood that does carry through with you. Right. I was Patricia when I was younger. Okay. Like how she was screaming and all that was me. The smart mouth. <laughs> Not necessarily smart mouth, but the standing up for what you're doing is wrong. Oh, okay. See, I was the baby in my family. So I was, I was BJ or my Bobby. Bobby always sent upstairs away from all of it. Clueless. We had some good feedback on Instagram. Also, Losey, some loved it. Would really love to see some, would love to see some really old ones. Same. Duskin, Stephanie, one of the most heartfelt episodes ever. I love this storyline. Oma Ten Perks, great episode, heartbreaking as well. And Demetria Zantakos, Luke had every right to kill his father. He was abusive and his sisters supported him when he remembered. That was a really good support. That was. It was just such a good episode. It was. It was, All of the acting was amazing. The way it all wrapped together. So you had the full storyline. It was wonderful. And it gave us a little bit of what we've been asking for, older stories. Right. So, because I'm a nerd. Uh-huh. Yep. So Ryan Carnes, who portrays Lucas, is who portrayed Phil Brewer in right. the flashbacks. Jason Thomas portrayed Dr. Steve Hardy. Mm-hmm. And Rebecca Herbst portrayed Jesse Brewer. Right. Those were three core characters from back mm-hmm. when it originally started. So when Lucas as Phil hangs up, he says, okay, thank you. But the original was just okay. Okay. Yeah, because I sat here and watched. (laughs) Yep. Of course you did. I was prompted after Liz's line of repeating, when she repeated the line to Dr. Hardy. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, that's exactly what Jesse said. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if the rest of it is. Lucas's Phil says Dr. Hardy twice when he's trying to get his attention. Original was only once. I didn't like Jason Thomas's Dr. Hardy. I felt like it was very cold. Yes. (laughs) the only word to describe it yeah jason is it jason thomas or jason thompson it's jason thompson i don't know why i wrote thomas i know that too i don't think that he mirrored his mannerisms okay did you no but i i didn't go back and watch like you did so oh answer to our question a while ago yes they did previously have pages going on in the background oh that's what i was looking for earlier there you go and i wonder when they stopped that i don't know i don't know either in the original we follow dr hardy from phil Right into Angie's room. Okay. And that's when he says, oh, hi, Jesse. 
or he says, how is she, Jesse? Okay. And Jesse says about that she's still fighting and everything, never wanting to see her face again with all the blinds drawn towel over the mirror. But when Liz as Jesse, she says, oh, Dr. Hardy. And he says to call her, to call, call him Steve. Steve. That didn't, didn't happen. happen. Okay. And he wasn't outside of Angie's room. room. Right. But she then says word for word, exactly what Jesse said about Angie. Okay. I just like little facts like Get that. Little facts checking. Because I mean, even to how Jason as Dr. Hardy opened up the chart mm-hmm. is exactly how. So that's why I was like, but he doesn't say the same thing. I'm sorry that they disappointed you. <laughs> and Lucas says sedative or sedation and the original Phil said sedative or sedation, but they said opposites. Facts. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're a nerd, mm-hmm. but I love you. Yep. That's it. I can't wait to see what they do next week, though. I mean, we know that it's going to be Nurse's Ball, but you have anything else to talk about with the Flashback Friday? I don't. I just, I liked it. I remember liking it the first time. Mm-hmm. It was just good acting and good. Makes me miss Luke's story. So much. I know. <sighs> come back. Yeah. Even if he doesn't want a whole storyline, just come back, I don't know, for a couple of months, somebody's birthday, a wedding anniversary, something. Come on. I feel like he's. He's done. Yeah. But I don't want it to be. His line's disconnected. Right. I mean, but if he wanted to come back, this would be the perfect time. Mm-hmm. So Robert can get his phone number and find him in all these months that we have off. Yep. And he can just walk back in when it picks up again, whenever it picks up again. It will. Do to do reality check. So how was your week? My week was so boring, but so good. The kids spent the entire week at their dad's house. So I was kid free for an entire week and I don't think that's ever happened. So really? Yeah. Wow. Whole week. Well, because up until this year, Matt still lived at home. So even oh, if yeah. the girls went with him, which Madeline had not gone, this was the longest Madeline had ever been gone, but I was happy about it because they're going on vacation at the end of this month. And so it was a good trial mm-hmm. period or whatever. And she did. Okay. She had to call me a couple of times that she missed me and she was crying, but that actually just made me feel kind of good. Cause I'm glad that she doesn't go over there and forget about me. But you know, the next day they do something fun and she was fine or whatever. So yeah, I spent the week being not as productive as I wanted to be, but more productive than I usually am. So my outside of my house is all clean and picked up and power washed and looks decent, which I never usually tend to. And the inside, I threw a whole bunch of stuff away and gave a bunch of stuff away and all oh, that. Oh, can so you donate now? I gave stuff to other people, Ow. not to Goodwill. But when I drove past Goodwill the other day, they had previously had, had those chains across it. Mm-hmm. And I did not see the chain across. And I know there's been a couple other thrift stores that have said, Last week, there was like three days between this time and this time. Sure, you can drop stuff off. So okay. it is opening back up, but I don't know exactly what the hours and stuff are. Because I got a ton of stuff to take there. I was going to say, I'm like, I need to get that done. Yeah. And I feel like that's almost prevented from getting too much done. Because yes. then you just have piles mm-hmm. of stuff laying around. And yes. like right now, it's at least secured somewhere. Right. Even if it's taking up space. Yeah. No, my whole trunk is filled with garbage bags full of clothes that the kids can't wear anymore that I need to get to the goodwill nice but yeah that was it nothing else whatever well I did see my family yesterday we had a cookout at my sister's house she will not leave her house and we were allowed to come over but we all had to stay outside so we had a cookout in the backyard and yeah gorgeous day whatever so yeah it was fun but that's it cool how about you nothing really happened I did a paint night last night virtually with my office that's fine that was fun I've still never done one of those because I just don't trust my artistic ability they they really do a great job of showing you how to do it i'm gonna trust you i saw your facebook post you did a beautiful job i don't think i would so that's so bad i enjoy them i never thought that i would be able to i mean i can't i did that one that one was my most impressive one that is to me that is very good but i mean everything's starting to slowly open up again and i've been doing so good exercising and Last week, I worked out six days and did so well with eating. And this week, I worked out two <laughs> and <laughs> ate like crap. Mm. So. That happens. Yeah. But yeah. I mean. Yeah, we're pretty boring. Yeah. Yeah. I I really can't think of anything exciting right. to happen. So just join us on Thursday as we talk about the story of soaps. And have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. 
And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 